Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, Reading Ideas. Uh, I'm <clears throat> I've been tagged a couple of times, I'm behind on tags and I, I missed it yesterday. Um, but <laughs> rather than uh, wait until next Tuesday, I'm going to do the Reader's Profile tag today. And because <laughs> by the time it gets around to next Tuesday, I'll be uh, probably working on a few others. Uh, this was created um, by Hilary B. Green, Book Bustle, and I've been I was tagged by Book Chat with Pat eight six six eight, and uh, uh, by Pat and by Gavin at Genre Books. So thank you very much to to you two, and so this is the reader's profile tag by at Hillary B. Green. So check out their channel. Okay, so first prompt, what makes a good book? Uh, you know, I surprised myself with what I, what I came up with here. I thought at first, oh, I can't, you know, it's so diverse. You know, what, 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 what possibly could, you know, what possibly could I, uh, could I, could you think of to narrow it down? Uh, and then, you know, I just started writing things down. Uh, the quality of the writing, surprise, uh, the knowledge that's in there, great stories, great characters, uh, the building of a new world. Uh, when it kind of transports you, you know, transports your soul. Uh, when, it, when, when you're reading and time disappears you know you're in a good you're in a good book uh, when it's entertaining and when that kind of third eye gets engaged when you kind of hear when the book's here i don't know if that makes any sense to anybody that's just what i came up with <laughs> uh two what are you currently reading now what i'm currently reading is the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and it's, it is brilliant. Uh, you might have to be a bit geeky, a bit into science, a bit into uh, English humour, but it's brilliant. I think it's Elon Musk's favourite favorite book. Elon Musk. <sighs> Wish we had him in this country. Um, I'm also uh, reading uh, Louis L'Amour's in between all the books that I'm reading. So shout out to Louis L'Amour. And what I'm also dipping into, uh, which I'll mention is The Pillow Book by Sai, I think it's Sai Shonagan, Shonagan. And I'll mention a little bit more about this, but it's, yeah, it's written like a diary in little bits. So I just kind of, read a few little bits yeah I'll yeah I'll say I'll say why uh, what's the last book you didn't finish and why you could say the pillow book that I'm dipping in and out of in and out of that and the it's yeah yeah I'll mention it now so it's I think it's the late 10th century Japan at the height of the Haiyan culture. Um, I th I'm not... It's all about, you know, the manners of the time. But she's a court lady. And you meet, you know, the, the emperor, the emperor's wife in, in passing. So it's about court life. Now, I'm not quite sure exactly what her role is, whether she's a courtesan or, or, or what... Uh, but people tap on the window and you say yes or no. It's 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 a bit strange. What's strange is, you know, one minute she's talking about flowers and and things and you know, and and it's just like you know yeah you can really picture yourself there or you're almost in the present. You know you can see the tree, you know you can see her talking to somebody, and then all of a sudden. You know, it will just be, oh, no, this is <laughs> this is a thousand years ago when they start, you know, talking about, um, you know, some of the kind of what we'd look on as superstitions and 
uh, you know, strange things. So, yeah, I decided to dip in and out of it, you know, rather than reading it all the way through. It's not written. I don't, you know, you could read it all the way through, but it, it's not it's not that kind of structure. Uh, so I've not finished that. I keep picking that, putting it back down. Um, but the latest book that I didn't finish and why I've it's a bit of a cheat answer I uh, found this Mashashi book one and it's a bit like a you know it's about samurai warriors and it's it's a little bit like the Lua Lemours in a way it's a little bit like a got a bit of a cowboy book feel but obviously with Japanese culture this is book one of five and it's kind of one story all the way through so I've had to put this down because I don't have the other four copies. Now, I have found, I have managed to get my hands on two. I've got book three and book five uh, for around about four or five pound each off Tinternet. Uh, I've not got book two yet. So I can't, I'm not going to start book three without book two. So I'm waiting on book two and book four. Book two isn't up there. Book four is up there at the cheapest at £22. So I'm waiting on that. So if you could keep your hands off them, please. Yeah, so I shouldn't have said that. Should have kept it quiet. Mushashi. And uh, what obscure book do you wish other people would read? I ummed an ad over this, but what I have decided on is playing for time while I find it. This is an obscure book. 42 Fallacies by Dr. Michael C. Labossier um, up on Amazon. And it's about, I'll, I'll, you know, I do, I like politics. I like discussing politics. I like arguments. So this is a book on, you know, fallacious arguments. So, you know, when people think that they're making a good argument, but philosophically, you know, it's not as it's on shaky ground. So appeal to appeal to fear, appeal to flattery, uh, appeal to popularity. Well, everybody thinks that uh, begging the question, biased generalization, you know, ad hominem. Uh, yeah, guilt by association, you know, peer pressure. So, yeah, yeah. So different, different, um, different fallacies. And when you read it, you know, red herring, straw man, of course, post hoc. So you'll read it and you think, well, no, <laughs> you know, so it's really, it's really, really good book to get you thinking about, you know, how the axioms, the foundations of, of, of your beliefs. So it gets you thinking pretty good. Yeah, so I think that's I think that's obscure enough and a great read. Uh, five. What's the longest book you've ever read? That would be The Count of Monte Cristo. Is it one thousand four hundred and twenty-three pages? Something like that. Very very good book. So glad I read this. Yeah, definitely recommend it. It's a time. It's you know it's obviously. A, You've got opportunity costs of reading 10 other books. Uh, but yeah, fantastic book. Recom thoroughly recommend that. Uh, if you could have a dinner party with five fictional characters, who would they be? Ooh, I was tempted to pick Frankenstein and Dr. Hyde again, but I'll keep away from those. I'm going to do a couple of cheats in here. So I'm going to have Laurel and Hardy as one person can't have one without the other but then you don't want to waste two spaces so i know that's a bit of a cheat spock the joker frazier crane i'm and i'm yeah so i'm gonna have frazier crane there to kind of like be moaning and groaning about what laurel and hardy are up to and all the rest of it and of course he'll take a bit of the fire from the the joker you know won't he so uh, and i'm gonna have lizzie there from Pride and Prejudice, you know, 
you just got to have a got to have a lady there uh you know a, a love interest for everybody and she'll keep people in line won't she she'll keep people in line and of course i'll be there but i'll be there as undercover spider-man just in case the joker gets out of hand so i've had a few cheats in there lauren hardy uh, as one and myself there as undercover spider-man should make for an interesting uh, dinner party I reckon Fraser Crane will probably get it. Um, right, seven. Five books you'd want if stranded on a desert island. <laughs> well, the first book I'm going to choose on Desert Island. No, I don't have this one in front of me. But the first book I'm going to choose is How to Build a Canoe. I am definitely taking that book onto the desert island. Yep. Yeah. I'll sacrifice one of my reading choices for how to build a canoe. The second book I'm going to take is something like this, a how to survive book. I don't plan on dying. I'm planning on getting off of there. So, yeah, all about building fires, uh, you know, first aid, compasses. Yeah, how to survive. Yeah, I'm not planning on sticking around. <laughs> so... Uh, third choice, I would take, where am I? Uh, yeah, I'd take the Count of Monte Cristo because it's very big. It should keep me occupied. Uh, so, yeah, fantastic book. And it's long, isn't it? But it only counts as one choice. I would also take, because it's so beautiful. Where is it? Uh Sketches from a Hunter's Album. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. Beautifully written. Turgenev. And last choice, I would take... I would take the Bible. And it's just, you know, the backbone of the history of, uh, you know, our, our Western culture. And just so much in there bit of moralistic company yeah find out go into the details find out about you know the foundation of of our our culture uh, as as well as all the, the the lessons in there uh eight one book you could not put down i'm gonna pick for this choice uh, maltese falcon by dashiel hammett I uh, kind of, you know, obviously I knew of the film. I've watched the film. I uh, became aware that there was a that it was based on a book, and that I'd started reading Dashiell Hammett. I kind of put off reading Maltese Falcon, thinking, well, I know the story, uh, but you know, I was working way through Dashiell Hammett and gave it a go, and it is wonderfully written. Probably, I think, in, for a crime novel or that type of novel i think it's probably the best it'd get my vote i've not read them all but that gets my vote uh nine five books or authors you will never read now i don't have any i don't have any author in mind uh none i don't have any author in mind uh you know i occasionally hear you know of uh, an author you know being controversial or something like that but i'm i'm probably not reading them anyway i'm most of the books that i'm reading are either not not contentious you know some people might think louis lamour's contentious i don't know um but yeah so i'm not avoiding any author in particular however there are books and types of books that i'm avoiding and I'll, I'll say so I'll give you without mentioning a book I'll give you a type of book uh, this is going back a this is going back a few years and I read this article in the in I think it was online it was one of the papers it, it might have been in the Guardian or or something like that um, yeah and basically it was a 
BBC historian. So a historian for the BBC. And he had gone to the War Museum, uh, the British War Museum, I think London. And they were looking at a display of, I think it was the Battle of Britain. And he had two daughters and one of his daughters said, you know, looking at the display, were there any uh, female fighter pilots in the Battle of Britain? And he said, oh, yes, they, and they were brilliant. And this article was him saying, talking about how, um, you know, his decision for that. And, you know, he couldn't he, he, he couldn't tell his two beautiful daughters that there were no female pilots and kind of go into why and all the rest of it. This is a historian. OK, so hang on a second. Let me qualify that. This is not a historian. This is not a historian. And the, you know, th that kind of comes back to me as, you know, there are, you know, apart from real atrocities, that kind of strikes me as kind of one of the worst things that I've ever read. That the, just the nuances of that, that this person works for the BBC, he thinks he's an historian, he's lied for, he's just lied, outright lied to his own children, he's faked history, it's in an article, it's published, it's given his name, and and just every kind of facet of that. So the books that I do not read are anything of that modern nature, you know, whether it comes from kind of some kind of you know, fake identity, fake, you know, communism, whatever, what, whatever, whatever the birth of that type of thinking is, I don't read any kind of books on that. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not interested in the slightest in um, that kind of falsehood. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, that counts out you know, a bit of a chunk of modern books, I think. Uh, oh, just a final word on that. Was it when I was thinking about it, I just had an even more awful idea of this historian. I just had a, a thought to myself, I bet it's not even true. I bet it's not even true that this person was so, so fake, going for this fake Victim, victimhood, false narrative, fake reality. That I'm, I thought to myself, you know, he might have even made it up. He didn't go to the museum. He didn't, doesn't have dot. Anyway, whatever. But that, yes. So anything with a whiff of that, you know, go find somebody who will swallow that narrative, but not me. And so that will be more than five books and five authors. Uh, if you were to write a book, what would it be about? Was it? As soon as you've asked. <laughs> um, I'm currently working on something which um, I'm hoping. Yeah, I'm, I'm currently working on something. Uh, but I've ri written The Real Up Fell Runner. That's a comedy about a group of friends that go fell running uh, yeah it's very funny you know uh, I've written uh, if you tolerate this this and it's how exams are marked in the UK and yeah how they fail 43% of people no matter how good that they are and what happens and details of that and I run a submission grappling club martial arts and this is a uh, my my thoughts on what i discovered running that and that was really pretty good so yeah rules and principles of submission grappling you did ask <laughs> right uh tag some people so i will tag a few people 
and I'll try and avoid people who've already done the tag and but anybody who's watching feel free to have a have a go at it it's not a bad tag at all bye for now